everyone knows it's important, but it seems not a lot of people know exactly why it's important. And I don't think it gets the coverage it deserves in the fitness industry. I suppose it makes sense when you think about it. The topic isn't quite as sexy as booty programs or how to look like your favorite YouTuber. And not only that, but we seem to live in a work culture that almost resents the idea of sleeping. In fact, the amount of time the average adult sleeps per night has been declining for decades. How often have you heard someone say they wish they didn't have to sleep at all so they'd have more time in the day? In 2010, researchers conducted a pretty cool study to determine whether the combination of sleep deprivation and a moderate caloric deficit would affect results in body composition. For 14 days, three women and seven men were instructed to stay in bed for either eight and a half hours or five and a half hours per night. Their meals were standardized at about 1450 calories per day and doubly labeled water, a very accurate method of assessment, was used to track energy expenditure or TDEE. In short, it was a very well controlled study. Three months later, they switched places. At the end of the study, the researchers found that both groups had a nearly identical weight loss of around 6.6 .6 pounds. However, the eight and a half hour group had an equal 50-50 lean mass to body fat ratio, while the sleep deprived group lost 80% of lean mass and only 20% body fat within those 6.6 .6 pounds. That's a substantial difference. That means that with everything else the same, only a fifth of their weight loss was actually from body fat. The problem is that losing out on sleep creates a vicious cycle. Thanks to two hormones called leptin and ghrelin, the sleep deprived subjects were also hungrier and just overall became more food focused. For those who don't know, leptin is a hormone that is produced in your fat cells. The less leptin you produce, the more your stomach feels empty. The more ghrelin you produce, the more that your body tends to store fat, reduce the amount of calories you burn, and stimulate hunger. I guess it'll have to do as an appetizer. <laughs> In other words, you need to control leptin and ghrelin to successfully lose fat, but sleep deprivation seems to make that nearly impossible. And it gets even worse from there. When you don't sleep enough, your cortisol levels rise. Cortisol is a stress hormone frequently associated with fat gain and the reward centers that make you crave sugar and fatty foods. A combination of high ghrelin and cortisol make it harder to feel satisfied after a meal, meaning you feel hungry all the time, even if you just ate. And then it gets even worse. A study published in 2013 by Nature Communications found that just one night of sleep deprivation was enough to limit complex decision making. As it turns out, it's a little like being drunk. And let's say even with all of this that you're still strong enough to stick it out in willpower alone, the study showed that the sleep deprived respiratory quotient was higher. That means for every calorie burned, more of the energy came from carbohydrate macros and less of it came from fat macros. In the end, the well-rested group lost almost all fat and kept their lean tissue quite well, in spite of a relatively low protein diet and no resistance training. That's a pretty successful cut. However, the sleep deprived group without ever straying from their diets lost a considerable amount of lean tissue. Now we can argue whether that lean tissue came from muscle, bone, or water, but according to the study that makes the best case scenario this. If you're sleep deprived, but you still hit your macros and you still make it to the gym, for every calorie you burn, more of it comes from stored energy and less of it comes from the body fat you're trying so hard to cut. Elevated ghrelin and cortisol means you'll be even hungrier. So if you're not sleeping enough and still doing everything else 100% right, the best case scenario is that you'll have to diet longer with less energy for workouts and being even hungrier all the time. That sounds like a nightmare. We'll just, we'll just wait for that train to go by. So I think it's fair to say, at least from my interpretation of the data, sleep deprivation does adversely affect nutrition partitioning and fat loss. And if you're the type of person who prioritizes training and nutrition, and if you're watching this, and I'm sure you are, then it also makes sense to prioritize your sleep. And not only sleep duration, but also sleep quality. And it seems the average person... Okay, we'll just, we'll just wait for the train to leave. Okay. I'm just gonna keep letting it roll. We're just gonna see how long it takes. I don't even know how loud it is. But I'm not redoing this book. All right, I think it's done. Like the average person seems to only need like seven, but maybe you're the type of person who only needs five. Maybe you're the type of person who needs like nine to 10. But if you start to get more cravings and you can't figure out why, you're, you know, nothing else has changed besides your sleep, then maybe you should just start tracking that and try to get your own data. Even if you're sleeping a lot, and see if your sleep quality is good, see if you're getting enough REM cycles. That's what I'm hoping people really take away from this video. I've always been very scientifically driven and I had so much fun researching and scripting and editing and 
a lot of sleepless nights, I'll be honest. <laughs> but I had so much fun creating this video. I'm not an expert by any means. I just really love cultivating information and I learned that I retain it better if I try to teach others or discuss it with others. So again, if you guys would like to see more scientific content like this on my channel, then please, please, please let me know in the comments. Thank you everyone for the support and I'll see you in the next one. Love you guys.